Welcome back, Rage Nation. Got myself Pete here. That's yeah. not really exciting. We got Senior Dixon. I don't think that's appropriate. And we got Monsieur Leopard. Explorers deserve it. No. Absolutely. I was disgusted. I cannot believe they've done this. Why is wacky? Why is that good? It's just nonsense. I disagree on that. That's not possible. <laughs> We're getting the band back together. We're on ambition. Yeah. Now, we've, now we've got a whole new list of things to complain about. Welcome back, Rage Nation. We are at it again. Got myself, Pete, here. And of course, we got with us Moen Senior Dixon from Puerto Rico. How are you doing, my friend? So far, so good. A little bit weird uh, at all the, the things that we're going to talk about today. Yeah, it's gonna. This is gonna be kind of a fun episode. So, just to give some context on what we're gonna be talking about, uh, we had a local tournament. It was kind of the first GG4 uh, tournament that I was in, and a lot of these players were in. And what I had Dixon do is, I was like, "Hey, Dixon, why don't you uh, make us, you know, three round pool, and you know, we'll see what we want to do with it." And Dixon ended up making three, and he had some kind of things he wanted to test out and a little bit of experimenting on what he was curious some players would do into this new gaining grounds. And we're going to talk about kind of how he set them up, but then we'll talk about what we noticed in the tournament, like what people picked, what were some of the lists that ended up doing well, some of the ones that didn't, and just kind of go into it there. I think it'll be a pretty interesting uh, conversation. I'm just like shocked at like <laughs> the, the more some of the selections. are different. Yeah, because the more things were different, the more things become the same or something. I, I forgot the saying, but it's like... I'm more looking... things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah, because uh, I made this specifically to see if, if people would go for the kill stuff over the scheme things. And I try to make it fairly even on all of them. And mm -hmm. I still, like, I'm baffled that every, basically all of them are very aggro. <laughs> I will say somebody who was especially running for their life in a couple of those rounds, I was like, good Lord, these guys have <laughs> blood in their, in their veins and hate in their heart. And they are, they are going for the kills. And yeah. luckily I was able to, uh, yeah, I'll talk about it as we get into it, but I was able to do fairly well. And I went two Oh and one. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we could definitely, uh, we should definitely mention some stuff. Like it doesn't have to be by oh, yeah. report, but you definitely should yeah, say yeah. what happened. Every oh, round. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely say, cause I was running it as well. So I finished my game early each round just cause I play pretty quick, but um, I was able to walk around and kind of notice the list being brought, some of the things happening. And I was just like, man, what is going on right now? But before we get into that, make sure that you guys check us out. You can do that on YouTube. You can do that on the Twitter or the X, whatever you want to call it. Discord is always popping off. Got that listed in the uh, show notes, so you can join that. And you can also become a patron. So you can do that at patreon.com slash ragequitwire, where you can support us as, for as little as a dollar. And we have uh, three fine folks joining us in the chat today who are patrons, and we appreciate their support. So they get to ask questions while we're on this uh, on this live recording. They get to interact with Dixon and I and whoever else we have on. Uh, that way, if you, especially if we do one like last week, we did one with Cackle on McMorning. And it was good to have people ask questions about McMorning. Uh, the other time when we did Rezzer stuff with Cackle, they could ask specific questions about Rezzers. So if you're a patron, you get cool benefits like that when we live record. And then finally, if you want to kick a little to us from buying your things from Weird, you can use our affiliation link at give us your money, please. Thank you dash weird.com slash rage quit wire. And a little bit goes to the podcast. So appreciate anything you guys can do to help us out. We love putting out this consistent content for you all. So Dixon, I need you to explain when you were putting these pools together, what was kind of, what were you experimenting? Like, what were you trying to figure out? Cause you said you were trying to kind of figure out what people would do in, with these pools. Yeah, I the the entire purpose of this list was okay. I'm not gonna try to push for one thing or another. I'm gonna put an even number of I want to kill you and I want to scheme uh, schemes in the pool, in every pool, in every round. And I did not want to put corner. I wanted to have engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only one that I kind of like pulled back a little bit was flank. I put it as uh, standard rather than you know corner or flank because flank you can technically go 
on the complete opposite and never see each other. So yeah, yeah. the entire purpose was I'm going to make it as average, quote unquote, as I can, so that anybody can have choices and see what they pick. And yeah. everybody wanted murder, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely interesting, except for the game with Trevor. But again, against him, I was doing the murdering. But the other two games, <laughs> I definitely felt my opponents trying to murder the crap out of my stuff. So I was like, all right, well, this is just that kind of day, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so I think we'll go through just the uh, the pools and then we'll talk about kind of like what you thought was going to happen and then what you kind of noticed happening And this. Even though this was a local tournament, we did have 12 players. So, I mean, there was a decent amount. Oh, just, yeah. to give people, just to give people an idea, we had 12 players. Uh, we had three Neverborn. We had two Outcasts, two Guild, two Arcanists, one Bayou, one Ten Thunders, one Explorers, and then I was playing Rezzers. So we actually had a really kind of balanced field, I feel. I mean, you had every faction. So I, I would yeah. say, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely felt good. So... Let's kind of go into this uh, round one then, Dixon. So round one, the pool that you designed was a flank uh, plant explosives. And then you had take prisoner, espionage, deliver message, ensnare, and deathbed. So yep. what were you trying to figure out, I guess, or predict or see with this pool? I, like I said, I just wanted to see what people would pick. I wanted to see if anything would change from last GG because... The, the purpose, the purpose of this GG is uh, people struggle scheme more, right? Yeah. So that there's other venues to win rather than I murder your crew, then I score a couple of points. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I was just kind of shocked. Like, round one was actually fairly even across. Like, the games were all, like, actually close to each other except for, like, one. So it wasn't like, like oh, my God, everybody, you know, is, like, getting crushed. No, everybody did their job, they had a game, but looking through all of this, holy crap, uh, nine people pick Deliver a Message and nine people pick Espionage, and not all of them were I, the same people. I was going to say, I noticed that <laughs> Deliver a Message and Espionage were like super popular this round. Edic actually said uh, a good point, actually. it's uh, He said that uh, the first point is very easy to score, and then after that, you can just gamble the second point. So, like, if you for, just want to... For quick, which one? Deliver a message? Deliver a message. Sorry, I should have specified. Deliver a yeah, message, yeah. yeah. It's very easy to score, and then the second one, you can just gamble it. Uh, but, yeah, it was just crazy. And the second one, you know, the the whole espionage, I was like, I guess people miss that scheme where, like, you score <laughs> from, like, what is... Uh, I forgot the name. Something about, like, Break, scoring breaker? two schemes. Yeah. No, no, no. Wait. It's, oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm thinking about... Uh, You're thinking about spread them out with information you. overload and all that. Correct, correct. No, no. Espionage is is uh, breakthrough. Yeah, yeah. Because so, you got to have one in the deployment zone, and then you got to have one on the center line. Yeah. And at the end of game, you got to have one in your deployment, one in their deployment, and then one on the center line. Okay, so that's so that changes a little bit of what I was thinking about. So yeah, because like incidental dropping ski markers while you're fighting was great for spread them out. Uh, but yeah, you have to have a plan. Yeah, this one, I felt like the reason, and I ended up actually taking both of those. I took oh, yeah. uh, Espionage and Deliver Message. Yeah. I actually don't feel like with Molly, and here's why I don't feel like it's bad with Molly, mm -hmm. because Molly has activation control, so I can still get last activation even if I don't fl win the initiative. Yep. So I can still be like, okay, the master has activated, let me put a scheme next to it. So I feel like that's not hard for me to get the last point if I'm playing Molly, but if you're playing a regular crew, yeah, I mean, you might not get it. <laughs> and, and there's a combination of two things. For the listeners, there's a thing when you're actually playing the game where, like, you can kill a model before it activates to gain activation control. And that means one less activation that Molly has to worry about. But it happens yeah. sometimes where you get two activations above. And that leaves Molly with the ability to, like, remove markers if she wants to. Yeah, so did anybody take and snare? Yeah, there's a couple. No, there's a there. there's, everybody picked every scheme. I saw that, but like, uh, the two that were like oppressive everywhere was those two. <laughs> well, I think those two are also out of out of what you have in there. Yeah, yeah. those two are probably the easiest to score. But uh, to finish the whole Molly thing, because Molly yeah. can get the activation by reactivating her models during her own activation. If you somehow get one activation ahead or two activations ahead, she doesn't have to reactivate the cruel again. 
In that yeah. case, she can remove scheme markers, which makes it so that any scheme that has to do with scheme markers, she can just remove them from like eight inches away. So she's very well, not, really e- not even that. not even that. I mean, if you just get the crow trigger on uh, one more question, yeah, they just have to remove a scheme marker. Also true. Also true. I mean, there's so many ways because like it, she becomes a win more master yeah. if like at any point in time somebody dies before they activate. Yep, yeah, I agree with that. Um, I, I feel like deliver a message is an easy one. I feel like that one got taken against me. I don't know if it's, was it in all three pools? It wasn't. It but was. The two pool, deliver a message wasn't in the third round though. Let me see. Um, it was in round one and two and my, my opponent in both those games took deliver a message. Deliver, deliver. Yeah. I thought that I put one scheme in all three. My bad. Because deathbeds, if you don't have the markers, you can't do. So for a lot of crews, that's just a dead scheme. Yeah, but um, I put it on the one where you get the strategy marker so that it was easy to score. <laughs> I don't I don't think a lot of people think about that, though. And I think that's still a little risky because you would have to put your plant explosive down and then score. Okay. And you're putting it near a model. Like, I, I don't know about you, but when I do plant explosives, I don't want to put them anywhere near an opponent. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no i just count on you trying to chase me that's fair yeah so when you kind of you want to chase me then i can drop one and kill you I, I just think it i think i wouldn't risk it though that's why to me i was like nope not taking that one that one was kind of dead to me gotcha yes are sick because botanists are fucking dumb i agree <laughs> <laughs> and they don't have to kill people to be good <laughs> that's the other thing that's great Oh, Edic. Yeah, what masters in ES? Uh, you can see it right there. If you hit the the, the masters tab, it'll show you. Uh, I would say ignoring the low played games because uh, there's only like two and eight and twelve for like bass and stuff. Uh, I would say with fifth, like ten and more. So bass one has twelve games. I would count him and everybody below him. So bass one is doing great for some reason. English Ivan two is doing great and he is good in this GG. Holy crap! And then Tier 1, obviously. English Ivan 1, obviously. Like, there's a couple here that are just like, yep, yep, these guys have always been great. The only one that I'm, like, shocked and surprised by her increase is Anya, too. Okay, with defense 8, fast botanist is a poor joke. Hey, man. <laughs> you, Ida, come on now. That's just hating. That's just hating. <laughs> Uh, there are there are max one games. The thing is that uh, what you see is only the top ten of every faction. So, like, if you actually go into the statistics, if you don't have an account and you're not paying like their their, their money and stuff, you only get to see the top ten. Uh, they have a lot of great information, by the way. If you actually pay, it, it's fantastic. Cool. You can cool beans. Yeah, uh, talking about these, yeah, talking about long chain statistics. For the factions yeah. dude you you gotta go into that link like it's kind of funny because like do you remember who the top three factions were like four months ago uh not offhand no uh not neverborn i don't I think i don't think you remember nevermore was like sixth place they were yeah look at it now uh let's see here so since october you put yeah that's yeah, that's pretty solid Dude, this isn't that in my opinion, that's dumb. <laughs> well, I think they got a couple masters who are really good for what's going on. Yeah. Oh yeah. Marcus, Pandora too. Yay her. Lucius. Jeez. I thought Lucius would be higher. Uh Marcus too, boom, too, too. Yeah. Do, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, they're all they're mostly all above fifty percent, which is always good. Yeah, of course. Uh, but like looking at the guild at the bottom, it's kind of weird. But what were the games that we've had? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, do, do, do. All right. So anyways, kind of, yeah, that first round was definitely, definitely interesting. Um, also, I feel like it was pretty high scoring as far as rounds go. Like it seems like everybody got at least four VPs and there were a lot of six and sevens in there as well. Yeah, yeah. So so first round apparently I got it about right because remember this is my goal was actually this. I'm going to put everything 
average, and I'm going to see if everything's going to pan out average. Somebody playing in this pool, this was a hard one. Even even though I was playing Molly, this mm-hmm. was a hard pool to deny everything, right? Yeah. Because it, it was hard to kind of get a read on which way people were going. And then the person I was playing played Von Schill. And this dude was going out for blood. So I, I'm telling you, I definitely had issues because like, I think I lost Archie towards the, I think, I think it was first action, first activation turn three, I lost Archie. Okay. And then I started losing cruel against turn three. And yeah, by turn four and five, I think all I had left was Molly, the rider, and I brought second master McMorning. So I only had those three models left. Wait, did he not like take out your explosives? He just left them out? Uh, he tried, but I had stuff kind of guarding it and making it difficult to get into him. Oh, and then, okay. And then there was one I had like completely on the flank that he just couldn't get to. I gotcha. That's not bad. It really isn't. No. Like, so uh, if Archie dies by turn three, that means he did his job. Uh, Archie didn't really do his job. I kind of... Really? He just did... There was too much there for Archie to get mucked up with. Okay. And I had to kind of hold him because he had a couple of manipulative models where I was like, okay, I got to wait till those activate and I want to kill those. So I kind of had to wait. And I waited a little too long and Von Schill shot him with his rifle and and, uh, killed my boy. Yeah. I mean, that is a a very good matchup. Or I guess bad matchup for you is Von Schill, ruthless guns is always great. Yeah, guns and there's leaps and you know they're moving all over the place and you're getting punched in the face, so that kind of hurts. So yeah, and everything has armor, which is Archie's biggest nemesis. Yeah, and McMorning actually only killed an engineer, but uh, I think the fear of McMorning too kept like the rest of his crew kind of a little hesitant. Okay. Okay. So almost the position, like just the threat of it was almost as good as killing stuff. Hmm. So I was okay with it, but I ended up getting it uh, 7-4. It probably should have been a 7-6 game, okay. but Hannah Black Jokered her leap. So she couldn't get the one or two points she was going to try to score. Oh my God, that's super lucky. Yep. I mean, I still would have won, but you know, it is what it is. Okay. All right. Uh, so... Yeah, this is just an interesting round. I I think it's funny because even though I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be the schemey kind of, you know, GG, I feel like there's a lot of people who still want to fight. So there, it was interesting to see some of the, the builds. Yeah. 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 Like this Von, like this Von, St- or Von Schill list was straight up Von Schill 1 with Hannah and Eric, two engineers, uh, and then a couple of small minions just to... Uh, kind of put things down. Uh, Still very, it, to me, it was a GG3 list. I was trying to figure out, I was like, yeah, how, how many people are going to do that? Because I, I know that we did that for like the first month. I started adjusting all my list after like the first week. But I like, yeah. I remember the first time that we played for like the first like five, six games, I was just like, all right, I'm just going to plug in the same list that I played in GG3 and see if it works. And none of it worked. Yep, so I think we'll go ahead and take a look at round two then. So this one was Wedge, Cloak, and Dagger with Power Ritual, Deliver a Message, Outflank, Protected Territory, and Information Overload. So yeah, what were you trying to do with this one, Dix? To me, it looks like you're like, oh, there's going to be the Cloak and Dagger stuff in the middle and then go scheme out of it. No, literally, I, it's the same. All three are going to be the same, which is intended purposes. I'm going to put everything that's that I feel that's going to be average. See if it pans out that way. This did yeah. not. This actually was super grindy. Oh, most of the games were like awfully close. If and there were like three ties or two ties. Yeah, there were a yeah. lot of ties in this round. I ended up tying this round. Uh, a game against Terra and Dreamer ended up being a tie. Yeah, and there was there was a bunch there of games were a lot by of one. There, yeah, there, yeah, there was a lot of games where it was just like, oh, <laughs> that's only a one point difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that that was not intended. My intended purpose is like, okay, it's gonna be average, but like somebody's gonna be the clear winner. Like somebody's gonna win by two points. So and no, here's not this one. So me me playing this, this is why I think it didn't happen. Mm. I'll talk about my game because it was a heck of a game. Yeah. But uh, 
just in general from noticing what's going on, everybody was kind of staying around the markers. So around the cloak and dagger markers and they were kind of fighting and it seemed like a lot of people were waiting for their opponent to interact and then they were taking it off their opponent. Mm. So that created people to be less hesitant to, you know, front load getting those Intel markers. So I feel like there was kind of like this standoff going on in the middle. And then a lot of people didn't have scheme runners to jump and go start to get their schemes. Uh, so I feel oh. like I'm guessing I'm going to look real quick to see if I'm right. I think deliver a message was probably one people still brought. Oh, you know, I got it right here. Uh, protected. Oh, yeah. Territories. There's a lot of deliver a message, too. There's five. There's less than half. But protected territory was like the the scheme to have. Yeah. It also scored the most. Yeah, the spread them out-ish type thing. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah, the reason so, why. Yeah, so that was kind of interesting looking at that. Uh, but I think that's kind of the reason. I think the strategy brings you together to engage. And then since you had a lot of schemes that were like spread out, it mm. made it hard for people to engage and go scheme. Uh, yeah, I think the, I think that's going to get evolved a little bit better because what I've been doing, and you see me do this, is I summon models into like the middle of the fight, especially if you already have a marker and you just try to yank it out of you. That's what I was going to do till everything died. <laughs> well, that's because you were playing. You were playing von Stuck this round, right? No, no, I played Molly into Castor two. Oh, that's moment. right. This is this and is the game where like he brought double Nephilim, he brought Hitomatsu, he brought Candy, and I was like, "Holy ballsack! Is this is oh, this is not what I signed up for?" But Pete, the Cavern Nephilim are bad. Because, you know, they're whip all four against terrifying. Yeah, I mean, he didn't bring any <laughs> cavern, but he didn't need it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What do you mean that he didn't bring any cavern? You just said he that brought, he brought... He brought, he brought two mature Nephilim. Oh, dear God. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, so here I have, you know, Castor just dragging these matures six inches up the board plus their base. Yeah, yeah. And... I, I deployed even far back in the wedge, so I wasn't even up towards the top. Mm -hmm. I was like, nope, screw this. I'm going to be back here. But I made the mistake in my list building. I should have brought probably the Dead Rider to drag um, to drag Molly around and some other things. Mm -hmm. uh, Mo Molly ended up surviving for a while. I think she got to turn three, but there was just too much, you know, heavy hitting stuff coming in. And yeah, it was it was just bad news bears. Okay, but you still ended up tying it. So that means that your strategy yeah, is solid. You just didn't the, know the matchup that well? So I knew the, the thing is I kind of knew the matchup. I just didn't respect it quite as much as I should have. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. And I I just took a couple of things. Like I brought the Valedictorian. I don't know if that was the right choice there. Even though the Valedictorian did end up scoring me like three points by herself. No, nah, this is um, a, an Anna. This is an Anna mission. Because like when we played, yeah, you brought Anna and that was a huge problem. Yeah, I think that would have obviously been better. But hmm. um, the problem that he had is he was going for like straight up blood. He okay. wasn't interacting to get the strategy a lot. Right. Uh, and that didn't give me a chance to steal him. So that was kind of like, it, it, he was pretty much just trying to kill my entire crew is what it came down to. Um, oh, by the man. end of it, I just had, I just had Archie valedictorian and my totem left. And that okay. was it. The only thing I killed was uh, I killed Hinamatsu and that might've been it. Cause that's all I was trying to kill. Um, I was trying to just scrape up points wherever I could. And he was doing a good job of denying like he was get picking up scheme markers. He was, you know, flying back to kill Kruligans. And I was just like, okay, well, I am running out of AP to actually score because by the by <laughs> turn five, so the start of turn five, he was winning four to one. Okay. But he had everything hard over on the right flank. So he scored outflank one time. Actually, did he even score outflank one time? I don't, I don't even so. think he did because no, because he didn't have he didn't have another model over there to score it. I think he might have got it. I think he got one point off it. I think, yeah, I, but I either agree. way, he 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 couldn't get the second point off. Deliver a message because mm. he killed my master super early, and then he didn't get the second point out flank because he was too flying around killing crap. Right, 
and he didn't get the strategy, but probably twice. So it was turn five, four, one, and he just kept picking up schemes and it was just bad. And turn five, I was able to finally sit up on enough scheme markers to score information overload. Okay. And I was able to get valedictorian into the corner to score power ritual. So okay. somehow after all my crew dying and all his severes being flipped, I ended up getting a four, four tie on this grindy game. <laughs> Wow, that's actually kind of crazy. I almost lost my crap, dude. I bet. I mean, you do have a history of like getting very mad, holding it in, and winning or tying a game. Well, like, because the same it, thing. Yeah. it was funny because, so one, when he killed three models first activation with Castor, because he killed Molly, right, and then he kills Acruel again, and then his <laughs> totem killed my forgotten Marshall because it ignores hard to wound or hard to kill. Right. So first activation, lose three models. I'm like, this is stupid. This is pretty dumb. I'm like, because he flipped out. He was like 13s, 12s, and I was just getting kind of ticked off about it, right? And I, I kind of started trying to grind back into it, but I think it was turn four, Archie Black Joker to leap to, he was going to score me a, at least one VP, if not two, but he Black Jokered his leap. And at that moment, I was seriously considering just saying F this game, and moving on. But I was like, no, play it out. Just see what you can get. See if you can at least keep the differential close. And yeah, we ended up drawing. So I, I, he was I, talking to my opponent afterwards. Nick's like, yeah, I was kind of hoping you were going to quit. I was like, I was about to, but I thought better of it. No, nah, that's like, don't give free games like that. Try to see if you can tie it up and lower the, uh, well, well, the differential. Yeah, I was going to say, plus, you know, I still had models that were good. So I'm like, I can still get some points out of this. If I don't, you know, yep. he wins 8-1 or whatever, you know, it is for, for giving up the game. Correct. And and looking at it, I just kept looking at the board. I'm like, where is this dude going to get his points from? Like, he's doing nothing but killing my models and picking up my schemes. I didn't get it. I was just like, I... I I know you like killing stuff, obviously, but how are you winning the game? And I, the funny thing is, I told him turn three when he killed Molly. I was like, so you took deliver a message and you just decided to neuter, you know, just slam kill my master. I'm like, you're just not getting that VP now. He's like, yeah, well, I think it's better having her dead. I was like, yeah, but that could cost you the game. No. And in Castor, in a Castor crew, I don't think that that's actually smart because like Castor doesn't care about the two damage. I mean, well, at yeah, least in my that, opinion, I don't think he cares. Well, I'm saying I don't think it was smart because he couldn't score the second point of deliver a message. No, I agree with that. I'm saying yeah. about his comment. His comment was that it's better if she's dead. I was like, I don't agree with that at all. Well, I think I think he meant it's better dead because I'm not drawing cards and he's not. I'm not, you know, putting out conditions and slowing his crew down and all this other stuff. No, I. Yeah, yeah I'm taking all that into account because I played against you many times yeah. with Molly by now, and no, I'm just like, yeah, no, you just kill the things around her and that's yep. it I, that's at least that's my experience if you take that if you don't take deliver a message just kill her if you want yeah i, I don't know how by now how many times i was like deliver a message give her the stuff and then she's like okay i need to kill that model that gave me the message and i'm like yeah i'm just not gonna be aggressive with this mo with this crew right now because the only <laughs> two things you have to really worry about in a in a plus well, i guess three is archie the cruel against and then whatever beater she brought those are the, T the three things you actually have to worry about, in my opinion. T like said, skinny Castori can be mean too. <laughs> Teeny Cas what? Skinny Castori can be mean. I guess I haven't put the time on him, but I thought that he was garbage. Maybe it's because of the people that I played against. Huh? I also think he's better in this GG. I haven't tried him yet, but I think he's better. I think the main reason why I don't like him is because the people that I play against, their casters are like very important to the match. Yeah. Uh, and against you, I've been playing like double masters. So I guess I should be, you know, aware that that's a choice. Mm. I don't know. In my, in my opinion, though, this was uh, a, a round that I have to like look into why did it not work out because of literally everything that I saw plus the things that you told me. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it looks like every game with the exception of two. Actually, even probably just one was pretty just grindy. One. Yeah. I think uh, Trevor actually did the intended thing that I was trying for. And that's the reason why his differential is three, 
which was a normal, in my opinion, a normal scoring yeah, game. Yeah, but uh, but Anya like can just Ryan just out and, markers, man. Yeah, yeah, but like Ryan and James were just out for blood, and obviously one of them won. <laughs> well, that's kind of what happens when you both go for blood. Somebody's going to win, and the other one's just going to yeah. lose out on points. And the, and the reason why I say that is because it's Ma one versus uh, what you call it, uh, Charles Hoffman the first. The F. <laughs> it was just I th- bad. I, I think, yeah, I think that's a, a definitely hard matchup for Ma. Mm-hmm. He's like. I think after talking with him, he's like, yeah, I should have played Mecha Mima. I was like, yes, you should have. <laughs> yeah, shockingly, even though the Hoffman ignores her armor and nothing else in, her, in his crew does. Yeah, I mean, unless you bring like Joss or something, but. Yeah. Yeah. Any, but in any case, uh, yeah, that I, I consider this one uh, a round for me to actually look into because it, it definitely showed like, yeah, everybody picked varied schemes and stuff like the first one. Everybody showed the delivery message and espionage seems to be like the easy picks. Literally. Yeah, and I think kind of going into the next round, it next round kind of seemed like the opposite to me, and we'll get into it now. But yeah, it was a uh, standard raid the vaults. And then you took sweating bullets, hold up their forces, information overload, let them bleed and in your face. So Looking at the pool and looking at how the game, this one actually, this round had a bigger differential. Like this one felt like, oh, a lot of these games, besides maybe one or two, were kind of, I wouldn't say blowouts, but they were big differentials. Yes. And I know, and I know why I like, I like noticed it. Uh, I was like, okay, so did I think about this when I was like making this pool? Because I clearly made it so that if you were scheming and the other person was going for the murder, if one of, if one of them won, it would win big because if you look at the schemes, they're kind of contrary to each other. So like if one person was winning, the other person was losing like yeah. big, it wasn't like both players are getting points at the same time. No, no, no. <laughs> like, if I'm going to win, it's going to matter. Dang it. <laughs> yeah. Cause it felt like you had a couple options. You could kind of sit in the middle and fight. If you right. did, you were probably taking uh, sweating bullets, hold up your forces or let them bleed her in your face. This one felt a lot more killy to me, which is why I brought Von Stuck one, because I was like, you know, this one seems like it's going to be like a boon to me if I fight. And I feel like Von Stuck does that a little bit better than Molly. Okay. Because I think otherwise, if I wasn't going to go Von Stuck, I had to go, okay, I'm going to bring Molly. I have to go for the back markers. I have to do hold up their forces and information overload. And that's how I would approach that with Molly. Hmm. Okay. Like, I feel like those were the two options. You could either try to get the back markers and kind of scheme and stay away, or you could be like, I'm going to fight and you're going to have to fight me here. I, I mean, in your case, yeah. And that worked out well, but like, Oh dude, I was doing the scorpion to Trevor where I just took the dead rider and I was like, get over here. And I would drag it to the middle of my crew and just murder whatever I dragged in. That is, oh my God. He had the uh, emissary just kind of like chilling out, right? Like debating on whether it was going to come in or not. Right. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to bring you on in. And so I'm just going to drag you on in. And, and then I ended up killing it with, what did I kill it with? Uh, probably, I think I killed it with a valedictorian. And since I had the oh upgrade on the valedictorian, I then turned it into a student of Viscera. Dude. Oh, that's just mean. Well, I, to, for the listeners so that they understand why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling, uh, most games ended by a differential of four or more. Yeah. Uh, there was only two games that like were closer than that. One was a tie, 4-4 four, four tie, and the other one was a 7-4. So, so three points instead of four. Oh, no. So yeah, no. Everybody else was just like seven one five zero. So <laughs> like it was and, just bad. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the matchups real quick because I yeah. think what's gonna end up happening after looking at these, we're gonna realize that I think most people decided to fight, and probably the person that had the advantage in that fight won. Yeah, no, that's yeah, that's what I was saying so earlier. Like, I, yeah, so we're gonna going see, through it. Yeah, well, just yeah. real quick. If you look at the scheme yeah. pool, the scheme pool is very opposite of each other. Either A, you go for scheming and you win in scheming so hard that your opponent loses on the fight, or you go for fighting. Like, there is no in between. And that's the main reason why I was like, I'm paying attention to the schemes. Going through the matchups, I want you to tell me in a fight, like actually fighting and punching models, which crew wins by fighting. 
Okay. So off of Von Schill one versus Tall one, who do you think wins fighting and brawling that out? It should be Tall one, but clearly Von Schill won that one. <laughs> I actually think it's. I think it. I think Von Schill one wins a fighting matchup head to head. I have no fear. I'm not. I'm on average Dude, they, Tall player. They ignore, if I play they ignore this guy, armor and they have super spiky like crap, man. I just yeah, they're not gonna get to me. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm listen. I'm not saying you're not going to get to me. I'm saying if they fight, yeah. So if you just go, I'm going to punch. You're going to punch. Who wins that matchup? No, no. I okay. I agree to the fighting. If you're saying into a melee fight, that's a different well, story. But like, yes, reason, this is what, what I'm reason, saying. One second, one second. The reason why Tall wins that fight is because I'm hitting you for like ten inches before you get to me. Even if you leap, that's still only eight inches. Like, I'm still shooting you in the face and ignoring your armor and pushing you away. Well, I think even if you're shooting, Von Schill has the tools and the healing to probably win the day on that. But we, we can, can play that matchup. That. No, no, we can play that matchup. I have, like, yeah. no fee. I'm an average tall player, and I still don't feel that matchup. Okay. So that one, we can maybe just say, like, the Von Schill player just knew how to fight better than the other one, but yes. that's probably why they won. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that a lot. Uh, what about Titania versus Hoffman one? So Titania two versus Hoffman one. I don't know how the the Hoffman player lost this. I think it was a newer player versus kind of a more experienced player. That makes more sense. Because even though, like, because Titania two, I feel like would have trouble punching through the armor. Yes, that's why. So. And they took sweating bullets and hold up. So actually, I think those are good to to do against Hoffman because you can kind of hold them up. Hoffman, depending on what hits you, might not get to you. You can slow him down with some of those markers. So so just tank him through. I actually, that's a very strong strategy. But I still think that with the plus flips, you can just overcome their their stats. Plus Hoffman too is just better into Titania, getting rid of the markers. Yeah, I, I agree. I. I First, I think it would have been Hoffman 2 rather than Hoffman 1. Yeah. The, the person picked Hoffman 1 on this. So, yeah, I, you're right on that. Yeah. Um, what about Nakima 1 versus the Clampets, the Ballyhoo bucket? Oh, no, this is even. I think this is even. This and is it was even. This one, this one finished out in a draw. Yeah, and I 100%. This is like a 50-50 matchup. Uh, player, best player wins. Yeah, because Nakima's trying to, like, chunk the paint. Yep. And the Ballyhoo Bucket players getting like ping damage. So, yeah, I agree. This, this one was kind of cool to see it, yeah. and it ended up being a draw. Well, and also on top of all of the, the thing, the Ballyhoo Bucket can also kidnap, whereas uh, Nekima can like go straight into the support and murder it. So, like, literally, they don't really have an advantage over the other. It's like we have to play our game plan really, really well. Whoever's best wins. <laughs> All right, the next matchup, see who you think could win just brawling it out, is Masaki 1 versus Barbaros. I uh, I want to say Barbaros because I'm a huge fan, but like... I feel I like Misaki Misaki should win that game. Yeah. yeah. I will say Dallas is a newer player, so that was part of it, and Brian has a lot of just kind of general knowledge experience. Yeah, in this specific matchup, the reason why is Misaki stats 7... Yeah. So she she just has that much more advantage. And she can just one shot some models. <laughs> she can also one shot some models. So like if he, if she were to charge with with uh, a focus and double crit, that's yeah. like more than half the health of one mature Nephilim. Yeah, you're just doing like eight damage to something. Yeah, so dumb. And you're not getting and you're not getting black blood because you have two inch reach. Yeah, that also that's another one. <laughs> All right, so I think we agree on that, but that one I think Brian just had Kind of maybe more game knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my matchup, Von Stuck into Anya one. I I don't think there's any world Anya could fight with Von Stuck. No, not for fighting. Definitely not for and, fighting. And Trevor was actually smart and didn't do that. Okay. And I told I told Trevor I'm like getting four was pretty good considering what was going on because mm-hmm. I was just kidnapping models and killing them. Uh, turn one, I destroyed his totem with uh, the Rider and the Valedictorian. He put it a little too close. It wasn't even a little too close. I just brought it in with the with the dead rider, dude. Why? Because <laughs> I hate that totem. And yeah, that totem I don't is want, really funny, and I don't want him to survive. That poor, uh, poor bird. Yeah, so it died. Um, and I think that's like even if this was in like Trevor and I are 100 percent even. Mm-hmm. I just Von Stuck just has a better fighting game, and Anya can't keep up with it. Yeah. Oh man. 
And the even, card draw. even his best, well, the card draw, which he was kind of like getting very frustrated at because I'd like yeah. cheat down. I'm going to match our suits. And he's like, go ahead and draw a card. Yep. Yeah. It's really hard. like sometimes you have to make that concession. It just, it's not good, man. Like every single time that we play, you're like, you want to cheat? And I'm like, you can draw your damn card. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> you fiend. Yeah. Because even the uh, Defense 7 Emissary for the Explorers, Von Stuck can just shoot it, and then yep. it gets an injured, and just shoot it again, and gets another injured. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so All right. Cool. Now, and the last matchup was Castor 1 versus Mei Fang 1. No, nah, that, that one I definitely gave it to Castor. Castor has, I don't know what it is, but he, he can deal with armor better than Nekima for some reason. <laughs> do, you think, do you think Castor 1 would have won if this was Mei Fang 2? Wait, this is Castor 1? No, sorry. I think he put yeah. one, but I think I, I don't. Hmm, I actually don't know. Oh I didn't, my god! The game, the game was over so quick. I didn't actually see which Castor it was, but Mei Feng lost a lot of models. I think it was Castor two, but hmm. it says one. I think it was two. But if you think this is Mei Feng two, do you think she can fight off Castor two or no? If it's one versus one, I give it to Mei Feng. If it's two versus two. I give it to Castore. Okay. So if it's like a disparate, uh, I would have to choose whichever is the stronger at that point. Like I think Castore 2 and Mei Fang 2 is, uh, are the stronger versions of both. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's even. I think Mei Fang 2 probably has an edge mm. just because of armor and shielded and kind of the healing yeah. and also pinging for one point of damage. Yeah, for brawling and teleporting and doing all the shenanigans. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that statement. So, yeah, I mean, I was very happy with the event. We had a lot of people show up from Oklahoma and we had a guy show up from Kansas City. Yep. And like I said, a lot of variation in in the player skills, which was kind of cool to get a nice uh, different group of people playing. Okay. Because even the newer players got some really good games in. Yeah. No, I, uh, I noticed that the 03 person... Uh, still, like his games were not completely lopsided. Yeah, and I think that person just needs more reps because uh, yeah. just just because still plays a little slow. Not sure of some of the activations, mm. but uh, still played pretty solid. Still, you know, Tall's no no slouch, no matter what level you are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, and I should amend a little bit. The last round, it was completely lopsided for that player, but. It was because of Nick, if I remember correctly. That was the guy that you lost yeah. or tied to. Drew, he didn't, Drew to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, So I don't know how that happened. I guess he was the pair down? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> no, Nick ended up playing Ryan on, uh, oh. on round three. Oh, wow. Ryan, what happened? Ryan 5-0. Yeah, because... Uh... Yeah, what is it? Yeah, Eugene ended up playing Abraham. Gotcha, gotcha. Eugene is the person I'm thinking about. Sorry. Yeah, but no, yeah, that's no. fine. Two. What do you yes. feel about the the two? I mean, three Neverborn, two Guild. How do you feel about that? I just I think Neverborn is actually in a pretty good spot this GG. Uh, like I said, Castor. I have gained a lot of respect for Castor. I made Lance very upset the other day when I played yeah. Castor with some double hang double hanged action. Yeah. Um, and Castor is just really aggressive. He's also very mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, and that double blast on the charge teleport onto the double blast is really good for getting into the back line. Yep. And talking with Lance, we were both kind of thinking the same thing where it's probably not worth bringing squishy stuff against Castor. Or Nekima. Just because, yeah, just because it's so easy just to get him off the board. Yep. Um, it's it's super crunch right now in in sense of like you if you're fat you don't have to be tanky you just have to be fast and hard hitting. Yeah, and you just got to realize when you go into cast or it's very if you're playing bands it's very important to be selective in what you are worried about. Right. And in, into Neverborn, I I I usually want to ban other things, but I don't think if you're playing bands you can let cast or get Nephilim. Yeah, I know you can't. Like because Nephilim getting ride with me's is not good. <laughs> uh, the, the the big one in my opinion is giving your cavern Nephilim or giving your mature Nephilim's focus because like Blasphemous Ritual is huge in Resurrectionist, but Resurrectionist 
anything under the sun can hit them fairly easily because they're poor stats, right? But in, yeah. in Neverborn, even a stat 5 with all the shenanigans that they have becomes, like, dangerous. Especially, yeah. like, a mature Nephilim that cannot be cheated against in melee. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think that's good. I also saw some people play Lucius really well in this tournament. So that was kind of good to see as well. Um, and I actually think Dreamer is going to do well in this in this uh, iteration as well. Yeah, well, actually, I wanted to talk about uh, to you about that now that we have some, uh, you know, months into this. And that's the reason why I sent you that, that link. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, we have more than enough time, if you don't mind going over that's it real fast. Uh, I sent everybody the link uh, in the chat earlier. I'll just send it again real quick so that we are caught up. Uh, just statistics from uh, October to now. It, it's funny. Explorer Society is still number one. But like the upheaval of Neverborn from sixth place to third place is yeah. crazy, in my opinion. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think this GG just does a lot more for them. Mm. Plus, they got some cool new toys to play with that are really helping them out. I feel like the ascension of Angel Eyes has helped Neverborn in a lot of matchups that were previously problematic. Yep. Because now it's like, if you're playing Neverborn and somebody drops Hoffman, just bring Angel Eyes and that'll help with that matchup a ton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think Lance... Uh, 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 in Landon, both have seen... Well, Landon was the first one that came in and actually said it. Lance, uh, after we played it, he's already like, why does she ignore everything? Yeah. And, you know, you and I have actually played her where, like, she's center on one part of the table and you basically have to give up that entire flank. So, yeah, she might actually be a problem. <laughs> I would not be surprised if they, like, increase her point cost to nine again. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, Guild being 41% win rate, that is insane to me. Just based on our games and what I've seen so far, what do you think? Um, I mean, I can see it because I think Guild does have some scheme problems with some of their keywords. Really? Like, Yeah, I just think like when you look at it, like if you play a Lady J or if you play Hoffman sometimes... Mm. or even playing like Dashel or Bass. It's like, if you play those keywords, it's fine, but you got to bring stuff out of keywords sometimes to help you scheme. Okay. I I guess. I mean, Lady Justice 2, still crushing it. Lucius 2, still crushing it. Well, not I shouldn't say crushing it. Lucius 2 in Guild, 48% win rate. I don't think that's correct. I don't know about you. <laughs> I mean, he's 54 uh, in Neverborn. Exactly. So it's like, I don't know. I I, I guess it's my play style, but he's a lot better or feels a lot better in Guild to me. Yeah. But Lady Justice being 50% is crazy. And the fact that Dashiell and Nelly are the best in faction is not surprising. But it, the fact that it's Dashiell 2 instead of Dashiell 1 is, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's fine. It's just, really? I think, like I said, just looking at Nelly, you expect her to do well in this GG. Um, Lady J is kind of middle of the road. But you don't think that Dashiell 2 would have done better in this GG? I don't think so. I think... Oh, okay. I mean, you can bring stuff to still... The problem is, where you want to bring him, he'll probably be fine because you bring him in raid and, you know, some killy schemes and he's fine. Okay. But in some of those more schemey ones, it's harder. You have to lean more on the amount of guard and then maybe bring like Luisa or a Rocketeer to help you kind of out with all the scheming. So I think you can do very well with him. I just think you lean more out of keyword if you like him in other pools. Uh, I mean, according to this, uh, Tall is not even in the top 10. Uh, Tall 2 is is ninth. But Tall I think 1 tall, is not even here. I think Tall 2 is actually harder to play. You think so? I think he's like Colette where he's very good, mm. but you have to figure out why you're doing the little teleporting and, and you got to figure out how to do that and score points. 
Okay, okay, I can I can see that. Well, I, I would act. I would actually play the crap out of Toll too if I was playing Guild right now. Yeah, no, I'm I'm curious about. I'm I'm, I'm enjoying one because I still think that he's strong, but apparently I'm I'm wrong according to the internet. So, I, I according need to, to the numbers, time. Bayou is better than uh, Guild. According to the numbers, though, if you actually look into it, it is not that straightforward because there are like six masters that are like 55 percent and above yeah that is not okay <laughs> in, in many many <laughs> other metrics yeah yeah it's five there's five masters that are above 55 percent. yeah it's ulix two zip two mal one and two and brewmaster two and you were right yeah. i was wrong about brewmaster uh too uh yeah a lot of people are doing some powerful things with it man yeah, I mean, Summer is a fifty percent, but he only has eleven games, so it's not like the greatest. But like most of the the the, the masters, like if we're only looking at the ones that are like eleven games or above, there's only one, two, three, four models, and that's it. Yeah. And out of the four, it would be uh, Brewmaster two, Ma one with forty one games. No, and she has not slowed down. Like she is the favorite of the faction. Yeah, she's just good. She is just good. Okay. So you're okay with her being OP? <laughs> yes. Uh, it's funny. Uh, Ophelia making some games. 49%. Not bad for a master that was like almost unplayable as uh, GG. Yeah, is people that, are finding what are something. That? Huh? I, don't, I don't know. I'm not. A, listen, I don't like Ophelia. <gasps> I don't like her play style. <gasps> I am not good with her. <laughs> oh. So if you want like. <laughs> If you want real opinions that matter with Kin, it's not going to be this guy because I'm just not good with the keyword. We got to get Moser back in here and try to figure out what's going on. Yeah, get get like uh, Jesse or somebody in here to talk about yeah. how you win with this keyword now because I, I don't see it. I'm like, I see Ophelia and I'm like, sure, you can stand there and okay. I mean, after February, I'm going to pick up Bayou again uh, for the following tournament. Uh, uh, not on March, but like the, the okay, month Okay, you after. can figure it out then. Well, I'm not, it's not about figuring it out. I'm just I want to play it because I feel like they should be stronger than this. Uh, but ten thunders, holy crap! Fall from grace. Ten. Thunders. I don't think I don't, I don't think they have, dude. I the only masters that are like crushing it right now are Lucas McCabe. No, oh, McCabe too. Let's just say it that way. And dude, how about all the Asami love? Dude, Oni always, like, we, we said that they were going to be strong in this GG. We even said it when we were talking about Beater Schemers, remember? When I said it's yeah. like, okay, so if it's not McCabe 2 for reasons, it's going to be Oni for these other reasons. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I was, I, I'm happy I was right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've played against a couple of Asami players, and it's been very cool to kind of see what they do. I got, sm well, I didn't get smashed because I actually came back and got some points, but I yeah. lost pretty bad playing uh, playing a game against, it was the Russian list. And Ooh. if I was banning, I probably should have banned Last Blossom because I got double mastered uh, Misaki 1 and Asami 1. So Okay, so that's actually something to keep because like 47 games, she is the most played master. Like Lin Lee is, is a 32 and Shenlong is a 36. But 47 games at a 68% win rate. That means a lot. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I cannot ignore that. When you see that in Captain Khan, like you, you might have to keep that in mind. Oh, I, I was going to tell people actually right now that if you if they declare Asami, like you, you need to know how to play against that Asami list. It's good. I don't think it's broken. Right, uh, but it basically the list consists of Asami with um, Minako Ray or whatever her name is. Yep, and and then you bring Ototo. the Atoto, and then you bring Gwen Gwyneth Maddox, and it draws, and you bring uh, the little spider lady out of the title box, whatever her name is, Yume, Lady Yume, Lady Yume. Okay, and the you see so many cards with this crew because every time you place within six of Yume, you get to look at the top card. Right. And then you also draw a bunch of cards with Gwyneth because she has uh, Deja Vu. Oh. So she's she's looking at her cards, putting crows on top, hitting, and just drawing a bunch of cards. Okay. And and then um, and then you're just summoning Jorgumo. You're summoning the paper dudes. And it's just it's a lot of efficiency and a lot of just, just good stuff, right? Yeah, I think so, I played against it. I lost by like a point or two. Yeah, and I think you just need to know how to play against it uh, because I've I've wrecked that list before, but mm. 
I was playing, what was I playing? I think I was playing Von Stuck. It was my first game of Von Stuck 1. And I ended up losing the game decently bad. And mm. I you just I didn't have answers for it because I was just trying Von Stuck 1. Gotcha. But um, but it was pretty, it, it's just a good list that you need to know how to deal with. It's very efficient. You got to know which pieces to kind of take apart. Um, yeah, I, I played against a because uh, it's the module that's strong more than anything. Like Lily Yume actually makes it a little bit better. But the Gwyneth Ototo Minako, uh, that little mini module makes it like a little, a little ridiculous. Yeah, I, I banned Story, but I think when you see Asami, you just, if you're playing bands, once again, if you're not playing bands, you just got to play whatever. Yeah. But um, I would say ban Last Blossom just so it's harder to get the shadow markers out to then summon the paper dudes to then get the whole problem kind of going. Yeah, it goes from I need a 10 to I need a 12. That's it. Yeah, and kind of going to talking about long shanks because in the chat, kind of oh. edict and T Lake are kind of talking yeah, yeah. about. I it. still want to finish when yeah, we're going to talk about the thingy that you talk about, but I do want to finish the other factions if you don't mind. After yeah, I, I was just going to make a side note. I yeah, I think I wouldn't. I know bag of tools is like big in like the UK and crap because they've probably been using it forever. I just think long shanks is better. It's like if sorry if that's a UK like feel bad no, no. moment but so there's I just somebody, think long is better so somebody in in the malifo world series committee is actually passing whatever they have in bag of tools also to long shanks so we are getting long shanks um vassal games into long shanks nice yeah so we get real life events and vassal from all over the world thanks to somebody in the nws being awesome like that yeah, because I just think Longshanks does a better job of recording data and maintaining the data. Yep. So that's why I like it. I've liked it ever since Guild Ball, and it's just it's been consistent. The guy updates it pretty pretty quickly, and is open to kind of additions to it. But anyways, yep. looking at the other factions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, in Edic, I remember having a conversation with a couple of people that said that they just since they made their own system, they it's not that they're skeptical. Is that they, they just prefer because they've been doing it forever. Yeah. I remember it was something like that specific. But yeah, anyway, uh, Resurrectionist, your faction, Pete. So before you look at it, what do you expect? I think they're going to be pretty good. <laughs> no, no, I, I, come on. What master? What do you think uh, is the most played? What do you think it's like, you know? I, I think Seamus is probably the most played, but I don't think he's probably the highest percentage because I think he just sometimes is brought when he's not played well or shouldn't be brought okay and okay. so if i'm thinking let's see here who would i put towards the top uh may, i don't know maybe castor is probably somewhere up there maybe okay. some mcmorning maybe some reva action i don't know something like that all right all right now take a look at it because like you were not wrong about seamus one being the highest played at 66 games 52 percent win rate so he's still above half percent that's incredible yeah, uh, I'm looking at the percentages, and it's like everybody's above 50, so that's yes. really good. Well, the top 10 is. The top 10 is above 50. But yeah, there's not, the... there's, not a lot of, there's not a lot of games for a couple of these, but... Yeah, 51% I mean, overall for the faction seems good. I don't know if the Molly numbers are partly my fault. <laughs> uh, it's a mix between... Because we've been talking so much. We've been talking so much about Molly. I don't know if, like... There's just that many games because people are like, oh, yeah, this Molly thing seems pretty good. Dude, the win rate. Look at the win rate with Molly 1. 50 yeah, games played, 66% win rate. That's not That's not right. That's not, I mean, that's not right. It, it is correct as in like, yeah, she's fucking amazing. But it's not right as in like, I don't want to see this. Please stop. <laughs> Please stop playing Molly. <laughs> yeah, and I think the Von Stuck number is interesting. I I think 54% with Von Stuck 1, that's kind of interesting. I actually I actually think Von Stuck 2 might be better in a lot of these pools, but I got to play him more because he you got to have more tricks with it. Okay. Because what I'm finding with Von Stuck 2, the reason why the last few games I've liked him is because you can put shielded out on your tanky models to make him even tankier. Right. And you can position, you can even do interacts to steal like the cloak markers off people. So... I think there's a lot there with Von Stuck 2. I like Von Stuck 1 a lot. I actually like him in a lot of different situations. But I think Von Stuck 2 might have some secret sauce there that is pretty fun. Yeah. You know, I mean, the number one thing that I hate 
when playing against Vashtok One, if I remember correctly, he's the one that has the your upgrades don't matter. Yeah. And I think actually because of a couple of crews, that might be the defining factor. Oh yeah. Like there was that one game you and I played where you're like, well, I'm gonna be plus two on initiative. I'm like, nope, you're gonna be plus nothing. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then I had I specifically hide behind like two inch terrain just so that he wouldn't be able to see me. Or I would block line of sight to him by putting something huge in front of him. Like yeah. it was just like you have to play the game around this. If you don't play the game around this, you're gonna lose. And I lost my master because of it. Yeah, but I think looking at a lot of these masters, I think they're gonna play very, very well in uh in GG four for sure. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I'm surprised uh that the low number of played models, uh I mean played masters in this in the top ten. Uh there is only one, two, three, four, five models that are above like twenty. I don't yeah. know. Hey, in any case. Outcast number four. Okay. <laughs> Pete. <laughs> hmm. What is happening? <laughs> There's I don't know. A There's whole a bunch of... of single digits. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, it's pretty much like, oh, you got Levy, Terra, and Captain Zip, and that's kind of it. <laughs> this is yeah, okay. So that number, that fifty one percent is actually a lie. Like it's getting propped up by a lot of single digit wins. Yeah, I mean, but seventy six percent win rate with Levy one, that's kind of shocking. Fifty eight percent with Terra one. Is also shocking. Like, don't get me wrong. Like the levy, levy number one. You're right. That is like obscene. But like, I cannot. We cannot just ignore the Terra one has 58 percent with 37 uh, games. So those two are propping up the faction pretty high, in my opinion. Yeah, I think the number is a little skewed, and part of this is just because everybody's still figuring out GG four and. Oh yeah. Um. I but, think Levy yeah. 2 should be uh, better, but I think it's most people have very good uh, practice with Levy 1. So, yeah. like, it's it's one of those, like, oh, I know how to use this so much that it doesn't matter in the matchup, right? Yeah, and it's, just so- and it's just solid, right? Right, but Levy 2 players, whoever is, like, specializing in Levy 2 is also propping up those numbers. 18 games played, 56% win rate. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, he's he's basically a beater schemer, and he brings, like, three more. <laughs> All right. We already did Neverborn, I guess, Arcanus? Yeah, yeah. Just real quick to Arcanus and then Explorers. Uh, Arcanus. Okay, this is not that bad. I mean, there's a I bunch mean, of single digits. I mean, you got Colette Dubois just massacring it, and Damien's still a problem. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, too. Uh, Dubois, too. Dubois, too, is actually a a surprise to me because of how many times i heard uh months ago people were telling me oh, i was like oh colette one is still better i'm like yeah but colette two is like amazing really so good. so i don't know if it's because i played her and i felt like stronger but like i think, I so think she's better <laughs> well once again i think it's stronger because i think it's just more efficient and i think yeah it's easier to kind of know what you're doing whereas presto changeo is a great action but it can be so hard to set it up. Yeah, not just to set it up, but to convert that to VPs. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Whereas Colette too, it's like, cool, I'm just gonna go score these points over here. Yep. I'm dropping all these scheme markers, try to stop me. Ha ha. Yep. But I I mean, even the sword trick when you like bury somebody when you smack them in the head with it, uh, yeah. that still can be played around. So yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I mean, that being said though, there is Two people here that I'm actually very happy for. One of them is your fault, and the other one, uh, whoever is doing it, you're doing God's work. So Sandeep Desai, 28 games played, 66% win rate. You monster. Got to pump, pump those numbers up, man. You monster. <laughs> How could you do this to that? I actually, I actually think the, the range you picked doesn't include my games. So this doesn't even include my games. No, it does not. But it is your fault because it, <laughs> you actually promoted the ever-living crap out of this guy. <laughs> yeah, and I'm probably going to go back to playing him sometime in the next six months. I think you had the most fun I've seen you play Malifo, uh playing Sandeep, and very, very close second, Molly. Yeah. Yeah, Molly's been pretty good. Very close second. But uh, yeah, Sandeep, you were like who, in, a, in a playground. Who is playing Rasputina 2? This is what I want to know. <laughs> That's the person that I'm like, you're doing God's work. Whoever you are, you're doing God's work. Because I know uh, that she's great. And people are like, nah, man. <laughs> hey, you, you ticked me off a couple times with her. 
And yeah. then we have uh, we have explorers creeping into number one. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, that one, I mean, they've been number one for like a year and a half, maybe two years. Interesting. They have. Yeah, yeah, they have like solidly been number one for a while now. And he got, got, got a bass. Said, pl- <laughs> he's got a bass player at seventy five percent. That <laughs> is what I wanted to talk about because, like, I saw it earlier. But like, Ida actually mentioned something very important, which is botanists are still there. We talk about them every now and then. People forget yeah. about them. They're a problem. They're propping up the faction, man. I'm telling you, they're Atlas. They're holding up that faction on their own two little tentacles. Yeah, yeah. that's because they're just they're just good, man. You can just put them down and they're going to be on the board to score your points. And very rarely, I think just like maybe on one hand, mm-hmm. I've seen botanists get killed. And it's been very rarely I've seen both botanists get killed in a game. Yes. Like you can get one. I don't think you're ever killing two. They're very, it's very hard. It's very, very hard. I had a game against you where three of them were on the table and three of them lasted all the way to the end of the game. And you were playing double masters in that game. Yeah, unless you have a stat seven kicking around, it's just not going to happen. You had three and you still couldn't kill any of them. You well, killed, I, was killing your, I was killing your more important crap. Yeah, you killed uh, my master and you killed the henchman. You're right. Well, I mean, I still could score points. I don't know by important. Yeah. Uh, that being said, though, Cornelius Bass won with 12 games at 75 percent win rate whoever's playing him must be playing out of his mind or something i mean bass one has a lot of playability it's just it's a very finesse game i feel like okay that's fair i mean most of these are, are at least double digits and yeah like the fact that bass is in that league is just weird i mean he beat out english ivan two theory one and jets a one I, I I mean like Dude, Eng- English Ivan being at sixty percent is pretty good. But yeah, I I I always said that he was great. I always. These, uh, I'm gonna yeah. look up these botanists real quick because I had a question about them. Oh okay. <laughs> You're like, how broken are you? How broken are you? Well, because here's my question, right? Mm. So here's why I'm wondering if if the botanists are good with bass because when their dust up markers come off the board, does that trigger their feed me? Yeah. So it's just turn one. They're just boop, boop. Wait, 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 wait. You're talking about at the end of the turn? No. If it's at the end of the turn, no. Hmm. How can you read? Is there a way to remove the dust up markers? Yeah. If I remember correctly, he has ways to remove markers. So you can remove your own marker. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I'm going to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's what that's what they're doing. Because if you just run like bass with like three botanists. <laughs> I mean, pretty much, if you look at it, most of the people that are, I see on the top 10 can run to uh, of those guys. English Ivan could remove two shadow markers. Like, yeah. it's just like, ah, oh, remove two shadow markers, done. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to see Anya getting some love, and you see Maxine on here as well. That's always good, too. Anya, yeah, Anya, 21 games, 57% win rate. Trevor, you need to practice more. <laughs> yeah he's been he's been playing on you too some I'm, of that's true yeah, i'm just teasing i'm teasing but like definitely anya too is a great pick according to the the number she is just gonna crush it interesting yeah, oh, yeah so i mean these numbers are definitely it's kind of because i don't think that these obviously are gonna be any way towards what it's gonna be another few months into this because i think the meta is gonna shake out a little bit and people are gonna figure things out Okay. Like I, I expect those Molly numbers to be pumped way, way, way up. Everybody play Molly. Everybody don't play Molly. Do not listen to this, man. This is like the most miserable <laughs> game of Malifaux I've had to play. And I play Pandora and it's just like, yeah, this hurts. <laughs> it, 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 listen, Molly is by a, not any means unbeatable. Oh, of course not. So. Because, yeah, sometimes if you get her pinned down and I'm like, I can't really get her out of here, then she just ends up going away. Mm-hmm. Which That's is what cool. happened on Saturday for me in one game. Oh, really? Oh, you're talking yeah. about the German. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I had Castor was engaging her, a mature was engaging her, and Candy was like right next to her. So she was just sitting here like, yep, this is just a whole bunch of suck. Yeah, when we played, you played Stuck, right? When we played what? 
when when I play, because you said it's like I need to play more games against Castor. It's like, well, I have a Castor uh, list that I used. To yeah, play. I, I played Von Stuck too because I wanted to try it out. Okay, but how did you feel about it? Because like I know that you lost that game, but that was like a new master, and you were trying to learn the matchup as well. So I didn't have a great list for the pool. Okay, but as far as the matchup, I felt very good. I felt like Von Stuck and his crew is durable enough to. Um, hang out and kind of score my points, plus kind of make things difficult for Castor's crew. Okay. So I just didn't have the right models to score the schemes that I needed to. Mm. But as far as the crew on crew, Stuck definitely had the tools to kind of, you know, bash that out where he needed to. Yeah, I I didn't even go to try to kill Stuck. I tried to, like, put you in a corner uh, so mobility wise, I think that your li- your list was lacking. That what we have added. Say sorry, say that one more time. So when we played, I tried to corner you, basically put you so that at any point in time I could like leave combat, and I'm so fast that I could just go anywhere else, and you you would you know be stuck in a corner. So I think you were missing mobility. What would you yeah. have had to fix that? Um, I actually think that I was decently mobile. The um, because Von Stuck moves stuff by himself, and then okay. I also brought an undergrad to lead the way. Hmm. Uh, the problem, I think, the real problem was the board had this giant lava pit and like, yes, impassable thing that I had to go around. Yep, and Castor and it- ignores the lava, and my uh, uh, cavern Nephilim ignore everything as long as they can pass completely go- uh, past it. Yeah, so I was kind of like, <laughs> you know, I think if this and I played that. St- I played a better list against Trevor and the mobility felt a lot better in that game. Okay. okay. And I was able, cause that was the, the one I played against Trevor was the first time that I really felt like I was able to get leverage out of like hostile work environment because Anna was engaging and near the emissary bow, uh, Maxine one. And there was another model there. And he could not do anything because he's like, I'm going to heal this model. I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> yeah, you can't target me. No target. I'm going to put this condition on Bo. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. That That is the most... Like, I remember, like, in our game, uh, I want to say uh, half the game, I couldn't even summon my sword. So I had to, like, yeah. activate the sword to get it out. And then you would, like, walk Anna within six inches of the sword. I'm like, this is some... <laughs> yeah. it's like, this this guy. Yeah. It's so dumb. <laughs> Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how things shake out. I don't know if there's anything else you want to talk about, but I think we uh, we hit that up pretty good. No, no, that was it. I, I wanted to go through that real quick. This is going to be a shorter episode than we normally do anyway. Yeah. All right, well, I think we're going to leave it there then. Uh, this is the one that we're putting out right before Captain Con, so that way people have some uh, quick content to listen to as they travel about, hopefully to Rhode Island or whatever tournament you're prepping for the weekend. So... Uh, just, yeah, good luck to everybody who's participating in Captain Con uh, with those two events. Hopefully, I do pretty well. I hope so. And I hope Trevor does pretty well and gets some good tournament experience as well. Because after Captain Con, uh, Trevor and I are going to come on with you, Dixon, and we're actually going to talk about, okay, so a newer player got their first two tournament things. Uh, what now? Like, how do you feel? <laughs> I, I feel great about this GG so far. I don't feel samey at all. Yeah, and I think that'll be a good episode to have kind of a newer player talk about their first kind of bigger tournaments. Oh, absolutely. Like, I definitely, I want to get Trevor in the podcast more literally for that because I want to see his progress and, like, what his mentality is. Yep. All right, but I think with that being said, make sure that you guys are flipping cards, flipping tables, and we will see you all the next time.